you take a look at this uh, illustration, you're trying to fit it on the page, so you could simply set up the composition depending on how you do it on your sketchbook or on this paper and see how it fits, if it fits at all. So I might lower it down just a little bit and try to estimate the overall thickness, not necessarily the angle, and you can divide these uh, spaces in half or thirds, whatever makes it easiest for you, and try to make it as large as I can so it's easy to illustrate. And so I'm just kind of estimating just from the drawing to the photo right from there. And this piece coming back, and it angles off. So the angle will be equal on this type of a sketch, at least. So you can at least see the beginning part. And the foundation that they have, this is a flat, flat piece that is sectioned off and then tapered in. So once I have that, I can be a little more accurate and say how I want to place this in here. So using this section down here, I'm going to make it almost two and a half coming across here. And one, two, three, four, about five deep. So you're trying to also be mathematical or geometric with the, with the shape. This I'm just going to taper up a little taller and do this one a little bit taller now that I see my proportion and coming across. So once I have this front facade, if I could repeat that, like I said, if I could repeat that back here, that would be easily placed in there so I could just extend this back, do the easy one first, <clears throat> and then taking a look, this one's going to be two and a half, so I can actually look back two and a half and just extend that line. It might go off the page, or at least up the page, and that'll be for the far back one. <clears throat> going up to here about six and just continue this across and it's going to set up there so I might squeeze it up into the top there and then again same there once I have this front piece just extending this line out as long as this stays within the 30 degree that corner is going to match that section so I've extended it just a, just slightly and again once I have that I can always adjust to say what well, needs to be taller here or shorter back here <clears throat> to give me this section in the middle. And then this part that's cut out, like I'm just looking at this uneven sides, coming across this way. And this is the one I'll demonstrate, then let you go ahead and place in there. That's going to be where the type is. <clears throat> and then this foundation, just kind of sketch it off into the background here. it here and you can't see too much but it does have a taper and a little distance until it gets down into the into the grass or some of the leaves that are there giving it a little bit more so I'm just going to give it a thickness even though I may shade and illustrate right over the top of this <clears throat> so not worrying too much about the uh, the panel but just kind of taking a look at the uh, at the lettering when you take a look at this it's going to center itself there's six characters six letters <clears throat> so I could cross a diagonal here and find the center line right there. So these are all tapered up that direction. And I'm going to give myself just a baseline, keeping it parallel. And come up here, just give it a height line. Like so. So this is just for the type. And come in just ever so slightly for that piece. So you used to have to illustrate this for the, for the client. And then dividing this into thirds for each letter, each character, and doing it on this side. So hopefully you can see that piece. So that's where the, the lettering would fall. And I could get uh, even a little more, since it's just one word. I'm just going to put a little top for the top pieces of the, f of the font, and just a little bit down here just to see where it's going to be even. So that'll help me. Uh, illustrate it, and I could even do one in the middle. It depends on how detailed you want to get with it. And believe me, they wanted the detail because they were purchasing this. So now, if I look at this letter F, I'm just going to heavy this up a little bit. And once I have that, then I can see where that letter is going to be. So I could take the straight edge or just shade it in, just to get it roughed in there for starters. 
and that's that's the that's the f. So each <coughs> character is is built off of this rectangle. So hopefully you can see it. And like I said, as a photographer, type designer, that's exactly what they're placing together here. So it's kind of a matter of getting the spacing. So once it's cut in stone, it's harder to move the letters now that it's all <coughs> placed in there. So that's the beginning of it. So I'm just kind of lightly placing it in there because I can heavy it up later just when I get the, the layout right. And the E is just a little clipped off. So is the F. And then here's the R. So the R is a little trickier. Just want to make sure it's placed in there right. And here it's come straight down and they even clip it in so that you can see how it's cut. So that builds up the uh, the lettering. So once you have that, <coughs> you're almost you know pretty much done with it. Just kind of show you this is the base part of it. So I'm just going to use the, a little bit of the straight edge to come down and just curve this just curve this up here and again it's a slight detail but it gives the drawing a little bit more build up so there's the top part of this one and there, there it is connected to there and again once I have that laid in there <coughs> when you look closer at some of the some of the reference it's just showing that it's recessed in there it has a little shadow to it and you can place that in there and it'll give it the feeling that it's coming out. The rest of this, just kind of going over with a little bit of the line, is just nothing more than some of the shading that we've done before. A couple leaves on top there. You can access this and make it more thematic. So here's the, the piece just kind of placing it down. And I made it pretty large. But again, all this is going to have a texture to it, so it doesn't have to be smooth. I'm just kind of laying it out makes it a little bit easier. I can cross hatch it or it doesn't really matter at first. I'm just kind of getting it all blocked in. You can see a slight shadow. The sky was rainy overcast so it gave you a different look of the uh, shade in the camera film or digital film really. I'm just kind of placing that in there. And again here's some of the t textures, the reflections uh, placing themselves into that piece. So it's just kind of lays this piece out right in that section there. And again, here's a corner that has a little bit more of the shading that you're getting it into. And again, using a straight edge makes it a little bit easier. Blocking this in. Again, just kind of laying this out. And it can go any which way all the way through to the end because then emphasizing that texture part. And you can use a straight edge piece of paper. Here I'm just kind of putting a little bit of a distance to it. Because all this stone that they get, usually it's from traditionally from Vermont locally, unless it's from Italy. There's a couple mines in Greece as well. Right now I'm just trying to give it some of the texture. This whole part is pretty white, but I'm going to give it the little bit of extension here just to get a tone to it. And coming back to the top. And <clears throat> I picked the one that had father. You can say mother. You can have your name on there. You can illustrate how you like. You create it with a little bit of it. pretty much what I have. So just to get started, I've blocked it all in. And again, when you take a look at the type itself, the second picture has a little clear that you can see it's raised type. <coughs> and you just have to follow along so it would have a shadow on this side of it. So just kind of clipping that in there so I could even take a straight edge and build that piece up. Thank 
gives you a little better look to it. <coughs> so just by shad shadowing one side, kind of like graffiti type that you might see on a train. This is just the similar similar marker there. <clears throat> so go ahead and give that a try as you go. See how you can come up with it. And again, look at the texture as well as the intersection where these meet, these edges meet, and make it a definite difference to it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 